this video is going to discuss a really important concept when we're thinking about cellular signaling and signal transduction pathways, and that is the process of amplification. So what do I mean by amplification? Well, amplification is where we go from a relatively weak initial signal through a variety of different processes to get a strong response. Okay, so that's what we formally mean by amplification. So why is this important in biological systems? Well, it's really important um, in biological systems because the original signal might have a very low concentration. So there might be a very small number of signaling molecules floating around in the bloodstream or whatever it is. Uh, so you might have to you know, even be able to detect one uh, molecule but if that molecule is really biologically important, even if there's only one molecule um, that you detect, um, if it's important, you need to have a strong and robust biological response. Um, so you need to make sure that if you're trying to activate, let's say, a particular enzyme in the cell, well, there might be 10,000 copies of that enzyme in the cell, and you want to make sure that every single one is, um, is activated, even though you had only a weak concentration of signal to start with. Okay, So... In cellular signaling pathways, there's kind of two models of how um, proteins can activate each other. Okay. So some proteins work on a one-to-one one -to -one model. And that's usually uh, where we have protein, protein interaction. OK, so you might have a situation where in the inactive state, you've got protein A plus protein B. So this is inactive. OK, when the right thing happens in the cell, those two proteins bind to each other. So they physically bind to each other and then that's active and that can go and do something later on in the process. And there's lots of examples there. So where two proteins physically stick together, You've probably got a one-to-one -one model, okay, because it's relying on one protein of A sticking to one protein of B, and then that's having an effect in the cell. But we can also have a one-to-many model. Okay, so in a one-to-many model, you might have this. So rather than uh, A and B, let's do it with protein X. OK, and then we have multiple copies of protein Y. So I'm just going to show four of them, but you could have a thousand of them, for example. OK, so this is in the inactive state. OK, when we activate it, what X does is it kind of goes around to multiple proteins in turn. OK, so X uh, would go and activate that protein. Um, and then it will move on, and then it will go and um, activate that protein, and then that protein, and then that protein. Okay, so here we've got a one to many model. So uh, this is now the active state. Okay, um, so you know, maybe that's activation through I don't know, phosphorylation. So maybe X goes and phosphorylates multiple proteins of Y. So it doesn't rely, rely on them physically interacting with each other. It relies on X causing a change to Y and then moving on and, move, and doing another one. Okay, And that one-to-many model is where we get amplification. Okay, so um, if we've got uh, one protein has to physically stick to another, that will not amplify the signal, but if we've got one protein that can activate uh, multiple other proteins, then we will get amplification in the system. Mm -hmm. So in terms of proteins uh, or uh, signaling uh, processes that amplify, So what are the sorts of processes uh, that can amplify a signal in the cell? Okay, um, so anything where you've got enzyme, 
will be a one-to-many model. Okay, so that's what we mean by amplification, we mean one-to-many. So with an enzyme, you have one uh, enzyme protein, uh, but then that can result in thousands of uh, the product, or it can, you know, if that's an enzyme that goes and interacts with other proteins, it can activate thousands of other things. We can also have ion channels. Okay, so if you have an ion channel, um, you can activate one ion channel protein, but you might have 10,000 ions coming through the channel. So that will again amplify it. So one channel protein gives you, let's say, 10,000 calcium atoms, or calcium ions. So that's going to be a massive source of, ampl of amplification. So if you're looking at the pathway, if you see something that's an enzyme, so something like phospholipase C, adenylate cyclase, and I've got other videos that talk about those particular things, those are all enzymes, so they will amplify. Ion channels, anywhere you've got calcium in a system, there's a calcium channel in there, that will almost certainly amplify. So let's have just a look at a couple of examples. Okay. So I've got, I'm going to draw these from other videos that I've got. I'm not going to introduce a new signaling pathway here. If you want to have the full details of the signaling pathway, I'd look at the other videos, but this is going to specifically focus on the amplification steps. So my first example um, is if you look at my secondary messengers video, um, I've got an example of fertilization uh, in the mammalian egg. Okay, so uh, what happens here? is uh, when the sperm uh, meets the egg and the membranes fuse together, so this is the sperm, this is the egg, okay, so the membranes have just fused together, okay, uh, what you'll see in the other video is the one of the first proteins that goes through is a protein called phospholipase C, which is a membrane bound enzyme. Okay, so that's already a hint that we're gonna have a process of amplification. So what phospholipase C does is it takes a molecule uh, called PIP2 and converts it into a molecule called DAG that you don't need to worry about. Um, and a molecule of IP3, which you uh, should know from the other videos, is a secondary messenger. Okay. So this is a one-to-many process. Okay, so let's just highlight that in another colour. Okay, that is one-to-many. I can have one phospholipase C protein, but that one phospholipase C, because it's an enzyme, because it can catalyze reactions again and again and again, we could have a thousand molecules of PIP2 get converted to DAG and IP3. So we've got much stronger um, concentration of IP3 than we might expect. And actually there's another point of application in this, uh, of amplification in this pathway, because what IP3 does is it goes and activates calcium. So we have an influx of calcium that is dependent on IP3. Okay. And again, we've got a one-to-many situation. So one molecule of IP3 will go and bind to one uh, ion transporter. So this is an ion channel. Okay. One molecule of IP3 to 10,000 calcium ions. That is also a one-to-many process. So both of those will end up amplifying the system. So we might only have one phospholipase C protein, okay, just one of them goes inside the cell. We might have, that catalyzes the formation of a thousand molecules of IP3. Each of those thousand molecules of IP3 can go and bind to another uh, ion channel, and each ion channel might let through 10,000 calcium ions, okay? So what you end up here with, it's actually, if you, uh, if you look at the concentration of calcium uh, against time, what you end up having is calcium actually stays quite low in the cell, and then very, very quickly, almost, it almost looks instantaneous, you get a calcium increase. So if that's the concentration of calcium, okay? At the point of fertilization, so fertilization is there, 
okay? We can measure a very rapid increase in calcium. It actually starts to go down again uh, quite quickly, but we have this really abrupt change, okay? So we go from very low to very high, and that's a really good signal to the cell that it needs to do something. We've had a massive change in calcium very, very quickly because of this, um, and then anything that's calcium responsive is gonna get activated. Okay, so there's an example um, in fertilization here. How about another example? Um, in epidermal growth factor uh, signaling. So again, there's a fuller video to go through all the details of this pathway. Uh, I'm going to kind of quickly summarise and show the, the amplification points. But there's a video there if you want to go and have a look at it. Okay. So what happens in EGF signaling? Okay. Well, what we have, um, if I draw the cell out like this. Okay. Uh, so again, we might have quite a low concentration of. Uh, epidermal growth factor, which is our signal, as I say, the full details are in the other video. That binds to a receptor, and in fact those receptors bind to each other, so you actually need two signaling molecules, you can't activate it with one in this case. Uh, that's the receptor, um, and uh, there's a couple of processes that happen in there. Okay, so this receptor is an example of a one-to-one. -one. Okay, so this receptor physically has to bind to this receptor. Okay, so that's a one-to-one -one event. Uh, there's then, there's a transphosphorylation event, so they phosphorylate each other. That provides the binding site for another uh, protein uh, called SOS. Don't need to worry about it too much. Again, that's a one-to-one. -one. We physically have to bind together. Okay. Uh, SOS uh, then activates a protein called RAS. And again, they have to physically... Uh, interact with each other. So we've actually got quite a big coprotein complex and all of this is one to one to one. The proteins are physically sticking to each other. Okay. But um, RAS then activates another protein, which actually is another uh, one to one, which your the other video will know that this is the MAP kinase, kinase, kinase. Okay, so uh, in that K equals kinase, kinases are enzymes that phosphorylate other proteins. So in the first example, phospholipase C was an enzyme that made a small molecule. Here, MAP kinase, 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 it's still an enzyme, but it actually phosphorylates and modifies other proteins. It doesn't make a small molecule in its own right. So all of these steps up to now have been one to one to one. But now, We've got a kinase, we've got an enzyme for the first time in the pathway, so this can then uh, have uh, an amplification effect. So map kinase, 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 what it does um, is that phosphorylates a protein called map kinase, kinase, so it adds a phosphate group onto it. Okay, so we've got a phosphorylation event. And that is one to many. So one MAP kinase 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 can phosphorylate a hundred MAP kinase kinase proteins. Okay, so we've broken this one to one relationship. We've now got a one to many. And in fact, we have the same thing happens again because uh, we have MAP kinase is then phosphorylated in turn by MAP kinase kinase. So in fact, we've got a second round of phosphorylation. So again, we've got one to many. Okay. So uh, from having only two signaling molecules, um, we start off with a whole bunch of one to one to one stuff uh, of proteins physically having to stick to each other. Okay. But then we get into what we call a kinase cascade, where we have one kinase activates a thousand other kinases, then each of those thousand goes and activates another thousand uh, of the next one long. So we start with one MAP KKK, but we might have a million MAP kinase proteins have been activated. Um, and if you follow the rest of the, the video on growth factor signaling, uh, then that what ends up uh, happening is that you ended up, end up stimulating cell division. Uh, through the expression of cyclin genes. Okay, so we get a very strong response. Um, so 
uh, we, you know, ultimately we go into cell division, having only had two signaling molecules to start. Okay, so this was all one to one because these are proteins sticking to each other. But here we've got an example of phosphorylation. So it's an enzyme, it's a kinase. One um, MAP kinase, 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 phosphorylates uh, maybe 100 MAP kinase, kinases. So we've got one to many. Then we have the same again. So again, we've got one to many. So that's really strong amplification in the cell. So if you're looking for signaling pathways and you're thinking about is it an amplification pathway or not most pathways have an amplification step not all of them do but most of them do okay the things i would be particularly looking for are enzymes and ion channels the other thing uh that you can have um and uh i've got another video the, the concepts um in cell signaling video talks about feedback a little bit more um, but you can also have positive feedback. So where an earlier stage of a process activates, um, sorry, a later stage of a process activates an earlier stage of the process, that can also give you um, a, an amplification step. Okay, so, but in terms of proteins, so if you see an enzyme, phospholipase C, adenylate cyclase, kinase, that will amplify. If there's an ion channel, that will also definitely amplify your signal.